with T quilts and we're on our next installment of the Harley Treads t-shirt quilt and remember again that if you're making this quilt that you do not have to be making a natural t-shirt quilt you can use leftover quilt blocks that you may have you can make string or crumb blocks if you like you can also use focus fabric say if you've got some big prints that you like to incorporate you can add those into this quilt top like say your K facets fabrics, you can use those as your focus and then frame those out. You could also use some panels if you've got some panels that will fit these particular sizes then you are more than welcome to use that. You can use hand embroidery blocks, you can use machine embroidery blocks. The sky is the limit on this so if you're not wanting to do a t-shirt quilt please do not make a t-shirt quilt. Again this quilt top is 96 and a half square inches it's a customer's request size if you're wanting to have a larger quilt you can add a final border and to make it fit a king size quilt if you're looking for a smaller quilt then maybe this project is not for you because I will not be giving any optional sizes as I'm actually working on a customer's quilt in addition I am going to be giving you block assignments every month and so I will put up on the screen so that it's straight for you and you can pause the screen of the video take a screen print of what's on your screen and then you can paste it over into a word processing software and print it from there so each installment I will be building on these particular areas now this month since we are starting out and I've got some beginners and I'm actually trying to explain the process we're only going to work on two blocks this month in addition if you are working on this project via working through the t-shirts extra blocks specialty fabrics if you could please email me a photo of your work in progress at the end of every session then I would use those photos as a gallery at the end of the videos. I really, really will appreciate it. And also share this technique with your other quilting friends and quilt guilds or social clubs. So let's get started on our first block. So what I did for me, because the 24 by 24 that we need two of for this month is actually the largest blocks that we will make in this entire quilt so what I did was I went into my t-shirts and I pulled out the largest panels that I had the largest screen prints that I had now Harley screen prints to me are some of the largest ones that I've ever seen if you are working where your shirts maybe only have 10 or 12 inch area for you to cut out then maybe you can just put four blocks into this 24 inch square instead of just one t-shirt so you have options as you are going where you can split this into different things so therefore everyone's quilts are going to come out different I'm using the biggest thing that I have to make my first a block so you need to do whatever it it takes for you to make a block that's going to finish at 24 inches which means it's going to be 24 and one half by 24 and one half inch square unfinished so the first thing that I want to do is I just want to use my board here see if I can zoom out that's far as I can zoom out so I just want to use my board to measure approximately how large is this panel that I have and I'm just going to estimate 18 and a half inches by 17 inches something like that so when I actually put this into my quill block I need something that's going to be 24 inches so when I trim this block down I want to make it so that it's something that's easily divisible for me to put a frame around the block so in it in true essence let me zoom back in hold on 
So my block is approximately 17 by 18.5. That's what I have from raw edge to raw edge that I could cut, not the screen print size. I like to leave approximately an inch and a half to two inches around my block. So if I measure that from the edge of my screen print, and I like to leave approximately an inch and a half on each side of my screen print. And this screen print's approximately 13 inches wide by let's say 12 inches so what I can do is I can cut this down in some kind of a way so I know I need a square in the middle and in that square I also want to put some kind of a frame around the square and so I need to know what size to cut this center as well as what size to cut my two side strips as well as my top and bottom strip. Now, they do not have to be the same size, your top and bottom, nor your left and right. But for this first block, I'm going to try to do the best that I can to make it all stable. So what I would like to cut this block into is say a 16 inch square so let's do just a 16 inch square just to make this easy and of course I have my camera right here in front so I'm going to try to angle it all over a little bit <laughs> so I can this block is approximately a 12 inch screen print so if I'm going to cut it 16 inches wide I'm going to be cutting approximately two inches on either side of the screen print again it doesn't have to be exact but I do want to make sure that it's sort of kind of balanced not a whole lot up here and just very little down here unless that's the particular technique that you're looking for me right now i'm trying to center them because when i go to the iron i want to have a little space to iron between my screen print and the ironing surface so i don't have to use a press cloth all the time so i'm going to cut this down into a 16 and a half inch square And I may need to move the mat to do that because I'm working on an angle here for viewing purposes. <clears throat> so I want, if I can get two inches above, I'll try to get it. Sometimes you can't because the top of the t-shirt might have been too close to the neck. So I can't quite get two inches. I'm right around one and three quarters. So I'm going to actually take one of the lines of my ruler and line it up on this blue area where I've kind of got a straight line going so that I can know that I'm cutting that square to the screen print. And then I'm just going to go through and cut that. So now I have one side of my block that is actually square. So I'm just going to rotate for the purposes of this video because I can't get in here to do it all in one setting. Now my screen print height is about 12 inches. The width is about 13 inches maybe. A little over 13. So, if I need something that's 16, I've got about an inch and a half that I can put on each side. I'm going to place my ruler so that I have one of my ruler lines along the straight edge that I just cut. And then I'm going to slide down so that I've got one and a half inch beyond the screen print. And it can be a little more. I'm right about one and three quarters. As I said, it doesn't have to be exact. and then trim. Notice I am not using the mat to trim up at that point. Okay, so now I have a straight of grain line going here and through here. So now I'm just going to put those onto the mat, square that up, 
and then I'm going to cut 16 and a half inches to make it square and I'm going to rotate my board just because it's easier because my camera is right here and then I'm going to cut down 16 and a half which will be at 20 and a half then I'm going to rotate one more turn so now I've rotated my board and now I what I want to do is cut 16 and a half inches over so I'm going to use my ruler to line everything up Okay, so now I have a piece that is 16 and one half inches. And then I also like to flip onto the back because I want to make sure that my interfacing where I trim the block will be included in my seam allowance. If not, I want to use some of my scraps to fix any areas that are not in the shirt. And that's another reason I like to cut them bigger so that I have a better chance of getting everything covered but without using too much excess stabilizer so I think I will add a little piece down here because it's greater than my quarter inch on this end but up here at the top that will be in my quarter inch seam so I can leave that one so now let's bring my grid back my finished square when I sew it is going to be 16 inches so that's what I've just cut for the center of this 24 inch square block that I need So therefore, I need to make the size of this block equal to 24 inches when I'm done. So I have a numerous ways that I can do that. So if I have a 24 block and you subtract out 16 inches, you've got 8 inches that you need to fill. And that's 8 inch of finished size sewing. One thing that I could do is that I could just cut one strip of fabric that's four inches and put it into the quilt top and everything is going to be fine everything could just be four inches so if it's going to finish at four inches that means that I'm cutting four and a half by however long I need in this case it would be four and a half by sixteen and a half need two pieces and then I would need two pieces four and one half by twenty four and one half you can also opt to put double frames along your quilt top if you want and then you can build into that you can also opt to make checkerboards if you like into your border and then you can alternate two different fabrics and do that so there's many ways that you can build this up you can just do random strips they don't have to be any set size like string quilting you can just add strips and then at the end square your entire block up to 24 inches or square up your particular sides to four and one half by 16 and a half so you can do it any way that you like for this first one i think i am going to add some i think i'm just going to add a four and a half inch frame just to keep it simple so if i got this piece I just want to make sure that I'm using a piece of fabric that will contrast to what I am actually using. I could just use this 
this orange that's got some modeling going on it's got some yellow in it as well and I think I might just do this orange so you're just additioning pieces and remember I don't have a whole lot of fabric to choose from because my customer did not want to have a lot of different fabrics in his quilt so I am abiding by the customer's request since this is the customer's quilt and I am just going to cut four and a half inch frame for this particular block I'm going to go cut two four and one half by 16 and one half pieces and then I'm going to cut two four and one half by 24 and one half inch pieces so let me write that down for you So that is what I'm going to go cut to make this first block very simple and then we will come back and finish this block. So guys, I, I do have my fan on so if you're hearing any noise, that's what that is in the background. Okay, so I have cut out two pieces that were four and a half by 16 and a half and I have sewn them onto the sides and then I have two pieces that are 24 and a half that will go across the top and bottom and I just want to talk about this a little bit and also I do want to let you know that I did go back and add little patches down here because I want all of my interfacing to be caught in the seam all right so when I went to press I did press the seam flat first before opening it up and then I opened it up and just used my hand to kind of lay it down a little flat and then I was able to place my iron on top and just press that's one of the reasons why I like to leave some sort of a border around the actual t-shirt itself from the screen print because then I can get in here and iron but let's say that you had to cut your screen print really close so that your seam line was very close and you didn't have enough room to press without being on top of your screen print then that's where you're going to have to come back and use your pressing sheet to press on top because you do not want to ruin your screen prints on your shirt especially if it's a customer's quilt because most likely these shirts cannot be repurchased again they are obsolete and they are a keepsake and so you have to be very careful not to ruin a customer's shirt so make sure that you press them correctly now i'm just going to slide my board down just to get it a little bit closer into the frame here i did pin and pinning is important if you want your blocks to match up and everything to be the same size so i'm just going to show you how i pin and i do this same pinning technique when I am working with my borders on my quilt top. I will pin both ends of the quilt about an inch from the edge. Doesn't have to be exact. I just like an inch from the edge so if I have to adjust anything to fit, it's not going to tug on the ends of the quilt. Again, pin about an inch or so from the edge doesn't have to be exact once I get those two areas pinned I hold it up and make sure that everything is meeting up and then I just kind of walk my fingers into the approximate center and I place another pin there now for this I will then go between the pins and add another pin Okay, now if this had been a quilt border, I would have added more pins in between until I had pins that were approximately four to five inches apart. You can do that at your discretion as to how many pins you feel you need to put into your quilt top. But for these blocks, I'm thinking five pins should be adequate for any size. This is actually going to be my 
longest seam which is 24 inches so this should be great well my longest seam for any piecing of the quilt blocks rather not necessarily when I start sewing the blocks together so again we go from an inch from the edge inch from the edge pull it into this make sure everything's lined up and it should you shouldn't be pulling much you shouldn't be doing anything more than like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch at most and I put my center pin in and then a pin on each side now I can go sew this seam press it and I'll be right back so I'm back with my first completed quilt block and now it does measure 24 and one half by 24 and a half and if you are not very accurate with your quarter inch seam I recommend that you measure your blocks and re-square them up to make sure that you have the correct size when we are going to put this quilt top together so yes so now we got to go to block number two so now we need another block to measure 24 inches as well. So again, I'm just going to measure my string print because I don't know what size that is before I even know what I'm going to put into my quilt top. So this screen prints a lot bigger. It's about 15 inches wide. And it's again about 12 inches high. So 15 by 2. 12 inches high so that means that this is most definitely going to be a rectangle of some sort so I need to plan how do I want to do that so I always just write down my numbers 15 inches wide by 12 inches in length so I just tend to write that onto my paper first and then I need to decide what I want to cut and remember I like to leave some space on each side so that I can iron without getting onto the screen print if I can so what I think I would like to do is cut these two into the I would like to cut the width into 18 inches so it's going to be 18.5 inches on my width and then for my length of the block it's 12 inches where my screen print so if I add 4 inches onto that that would be 16.5 so I've always got to add my half inch seam allowance so now I'm back with numbers that are easily divisible into this block so again for my lengths I have 16 and a half so 24 minus 16 again so on my length I'm going to need 8 inches of fabric and then for my width which is at 24 so 24 minus 18 I'm going to need six inches additional so this is going to be one of those where I've got different size top and bottom borders <coughs> so the first step is to go ahead and cut this into 18 and one half by 16 and one half now I'm back with my pieces and now I have to find some contrasting fabrics for these as well and I just used the orange I've got some stripe that I can use <clears throat> I've got some gray that I can use and they also have some black that I can use so for this block maybe we can do a combination of two fabrics here this time Again, I'm keeping my piecing very simple on this because I am working on a customer's quote and so I'm getting paid for 
labor except for the blocks that I'm actually doing on camera because it's taking me much longer to do those. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing fancy piece work on this. I just want to get the t-shirt quilt completed. So I think what I might do with this one is actually put black around it. And then add another piece of just a small piece of stripe. And I'm going to do that to both sides and then I'll determine what I'm going to do to the top and bottom. I'll be right back after I do some cutting. Okay, I'm back with my second section cut. And remember, we needed this section to be 18 and one half inches wide by 16 and one half inches tall. Now, when I got to cutting the 16 and a half, I only had room to cut 16 and one quarter. And I'm going to talk about that later. So what have I done? I have cut my side pieces because if it's 18 and a half, I needed six additional inches finished. So I cut two pieces that will finish at three inches. I cut three and a half by 16 and a half. Did that twice. And I've gone ahead and sewn that to my center block. What I did did because I needed to have eight inches more added to the top and bottom to get it to 24 inches. So again, I cut two strips that were three and a half inches by 24 and a half inches. That will finish at six inches, but I needed two more additional inches in order to fit to eight inch plus, I need to add a quarter for one of the Plus, I need to add a quarter of an inch to one of my pieces because I was short a quarter of an inch in the width. So what I did for that additional one inch, I'm going to have strips that finish at one inch. So I cut this first strip one and a half inches by 24 and a half inches. And it will finish at, this unit here will finish now at four inches. Down here on this unit, I add an extra quarter. So therefore I cut my strip one and three quarter inches by 24 and a half inches. So I just wanted to make sure you were aware that I compensated for adding that on. And now I'm just going to add these pieces onto the top and bottom. And I could decide if I want to add it so that the black was up against the quilt top with the stripe being extra, or if I wanted to just change it up a little bit, I could add it where the stripe is in the middle. I'm going to leave my stripe on the outside of the block because when I come up to my units that might have butt next to this, it might be a plain t-shirt and it would add some interest to the actual t-shirt that it's next to. So that's what I'm opting to do. And I will sew these units together and then we will have our two A blocks done for today. So I am back with my completed block and now they both measure 24 and one half inches. And here is a look at both of them. So yes, so today we're only going to work on two blocks just to get the beginner started. I think next time we have seven B blocks so we will have a little bit more work to do. And I probably will not show you all of them on camera since it's so many but I will show you all seven of them completed so thank you all for watching thank you for participating in this sewing challenge again if you'd like to send me photos of your completed a blocks you can email them to tquilts at tquilts.com and I will include them in one of the uploads in the gallery thank you so much for watching bye bye for now Thank you.